Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. Welcome to Impost. Thanks for joining me today. Well, today we're going to do a live edit, live in air quotes. I'm not live streaming, but what I am doing is taking a photo I've never worked on, bring it up and start processing it, and we see what we end up with. I'll try my best to share the thought process, what's going on in my head as I work on the photo. And the photo I'm going to do today is one that I took during the same outing I shared on In the Field. This is a, one, of the, one of my favorite spots along the, the shores of La Jolla in San Diego. I like taking my workshop groups here. because this is a, It's a beautiful beach. And so what we have in this scene is a, a few things going on. And the first thing I like to do is a kind of an image assessment. You know, what do I need to do to this photo? Uh, certainly a fair amount of contrast. That happens when the sun starts to go down, um, or rise for that matter, if you're uh, you know, doing a sunrise photo, and you've got some strong foreground elements. Those are getting backlit. They get very shadowy, and uh, there's this period of time between the sun being at the horizon and it's being above the horizon. It's a challenging time to take a photo uh, because of these you know, contrasty issues. So I certainly need to open up the shadows in the in the photo overall but particularly kind of this area i'm curving around there's almost like a uh, a bright you know kind of the rays of the sun like the glow of the sun this bright area here is okay but everything else here needs to open up uh, i'm going to straighten the horizon do some lens corrections and probably do a little crop to trim away some of the distracting things that are on the edge and then from there, we'll, we'll see where, uh, where color takes us. Um, I have a suspicion with this photo that if I push you know, color and saturation too far, the sky is going to get a, um, an awkward looking yellow. A lot of times we try to push pure whites because the sun is blown out. We try to push that too far, it's going to get too yellow. So let's start here. Um, a very first thing, let's get the crop tool up. And actually, not the crop tool. Let me make sure my lens corrections are turned on. Then we'll do the crop just to rotate that get that alignment on the horizon and then tug this in a little bit just to remove some of these distracting bits of rock on the edge. Those aren't adding to the story of this photo. And uh, I like the line. This is coming in from a corner. This is mostly a corner. We've got this coming in here. So all, all roads are pointing toward the sun. That's good. And um, next is, let's check spot removal. So Q key for that and A for the the overlay and what I'm really looking for is just anything that could be construed as a sensor spot um, and I don't see too much at all that looks like it would be a, a dust spot we'll do a quick check maybe this little bit up here click on that one pan down there are some spots on the rocks that are distracting you know I don't need that large white blob to be part of the photo what else we got? What's this up in here? That's just a cloud, okay? Sometimes it can be, uh, you know, um, a bird flying through the scene. Uh, now, oh, okay, so we got some surfers out here. Um, don't mind. Uh, actually, they were very nice to have separated themselves well, except for maybe this here. Let's, let's try to get rid of that bit of blob, and that is not a good sample point. Let's move that. So you can get closer. Something, and what I'm trying to do is just roughly line up the waves a little bit. That is not looking good at all. Let's try again. Bigger brush and maybe a little more of a feather on it. Feather is bad idea. Let's try one more time. Lighter feather. And then that's going to be okay. That's going to be acceptable. And we'll take care of a couple of more that are off in the distance. The rest, um, hmm, let's zoom back out for a second. Okay, this is not near the edge. When I was zoomed in, I was thinking this, this, this surfer here might be a little bit close to the edge and pull the eye out of the frame. Not the case. So let's just finish off skimming around really quickly for anything else that we don't really need to have in the scene. A key. And like that little thing there, right? At, especially when it's right at an edge like that, that's going to pull my viewer's eye out of the frame. And I don't want that. Right? I want to keep the eye in the frame as long as possible. Maybe that little spot there as well. Uh, I'll leave that one until I've opened up shadows. We never know what that might lead. Now there's some other cleanup that I can see along the edge here where there's uh, some more stuff on the beach. 
this is where I'll stop with the initial corrections because you can start going haywire, cleaning up the beach with all the little bits of things that are on there. I want to get the photo into a state where it's something that, yes, it's going to warrant that additional work or no, it's good as it is and it's a nice photo, but not one of those uh, ones you're going to spend that extra time on. Um, now, um, I've been thinking about trying this out. I mean, let's try it out. Uh, so I've been doing a fair amount of work in Luminar, leveraging some of the AI filters, and those do a great starting job to get uh, a photo pretty far. And so instead of going into you know the profiles and doing all this stuff, um, just to make sure we've got a good exposure. So we've got, you know, I don't mind these highlights being blown out. The pure blacks aren't bad at all, but let's just tug back um, a little bit on the highlights just so those are reined in. So now I've got all the tones here. And so, you know, this is where we want the raw file, right? So we can do this type of magic. And if I convert it to something else to send it to another program, like I'm about to do, um, it's okay that um, I'm no longer working in raw. I'm going to send this over to Luminar. And the idea being, I'm going to leverage the the uh, the AI filters just to get a baseline of the photo. Now I may bring it back in the Lightroom and do more work on it. Kind of all depends. As this is loading up, so you know why did I uh, not do like uh, other retouches and so on and so forth uh, in Luminar? Uh, I prefer the retouching tools in Lightroom and in On One Photo. Luminar's got stuff, but I, I personally think it needs a little more work, and I prefer what I have in Lightroom. Okay, so to make that nice and big. Let's go ahead and make our photo nice and big. And here we are. We've got everything. Histogram looks good. We've got all the tones, nothing being clipped. So I'll go ahead and hide that. And uh, I have a little workspace because I like to have a few of the other controls, namely develop, available to me. But here's the two AI filters. And so I'm going to just start off with the boost. Let's push it all the way. And that's, that's looking gaudy and, and not good. And as I feared, if I push that too far, you know, that sky is getting just too yellowed. Uh, it, the, the accent is trying to, to pull in too many of those highlights. So somewhere around pushing it to about 55 is pretty good. Sky Enhancer won't do much here. I'll push it so you can see what happens. Right? That, that's, it's finding the sky. It knows what a sky is. It's making it bluer and richer. Um, too much. I'm still, I'm still not happy with those yellows. Let's do this. Let's take the shadows up now. This is why I like to have the um, develop, or if you're working on a raw file, raw develop as part of my default workspace, because I usually need to um, do some additional work, or I like to do some additional work, I should say. Sometimes I don't need to, but other times I like to. Uh, what do we got here? So. Let me just quickly hit the and hold the backslash key so we can take a look. This was before those basically four sliders, and this is after, so it's certainly a lot better. I still am not too happy with how the, the yellow tones in the sky look. That was the boost. Let's take boost back, and I'm seeing around 30 it looks okay, but pushing it past that, not so much. Um, all right, so here's a... Uh, a somewhat little known trick, I think, in Luminar. Uh, these AI filters, you can have more than one. You can add the same one multiple times. So I can go into Add Filter, I can find Accent AI, and add it again. I don't have to be limited to one. And I can mask. So the idea here is I'm going to push this second boost filter, open up and get nice toning on everything except the center part, and then we'll mask it away. So let's push this their boost filter. And what I'm watching is everything except this area here. You can almost see if I push it really far, it's almost like drawing the vignette for me. And I, you know, I, it's, I'm getting a bit of lens flare. You can even see that at the bottom of the screen too. So let's push this here. Let me check before that second boost and after. Pull that back a little bit. And now in the masking areas, I'll use a radial mask. Click and drag to draw a circle. There we go. And let's shape this down a bit. And we're masking it away from this area that was getting too yellow. All right, so now let me hit done on that mask before that second boost and after. So I'm getting a nice additional boost in the foreground and avoiding over yellowing the sky.
Um, anything else that I want to do with this here? Now, uh, I have to admit, I'm having a little trouble with the studio lights playing a bit of games with me on the display. Things feel a little dark and shady on the left side to me, but I'm not so sure if that's um that's a trick of the light or not. And I, don't know, I just it still feels a little bit a little bit shaded to me. So let me nudge just overall exposure up. Don't like that. That's not good. Let's try those highlights or sorry those shadows again. I'll take those shadows up just a touch more. Check it before and after before and after hmm. not too bad not too bad um let's see at this stage i think i'd be finished with with my, my play in in luminar here i'm going to bring this back into lightroom hit apply send that back over to lightroom and uh i'm going to try a couple more of the uh graduated filters and just fundamentally doing some large scale dodging and burning just to see about evening out the tones overall for the scene. So once this gets back in the Lightroom, we'll be good to go. All right, back over in Lightroom and let's do a little more work with some graduated filters and doing a uh, a bit of, let's do a, a dodge and kind of open up this side here. That felt a little shadowed to me. And I will use range masks, love those. This is uh, just something I, I can't get enough of in Lightroom and tuck it away from the, the highlights. I just want to brighten up shadows there. So let's go ahead and start that one. Let's see before and after there. Yeah, that's, that's nicer. That's good. Um, maybe even a slight more nudge. Usually the, usually the dodge and burn are defaulted at like a third of a stop. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, let's make one more for this corner here. And the same, actually, this will be faster if I just take this, duplicate it, and then move it down here. So I can have those same luminance settings applied here as well. So stuff like that. Let's, let's take a look at now before and after with, uh, with these two filters, before and after. Yeah, it's just evening out the scene. That's just, that's nice. Um, last thing to do, now that I can see the foreground, there are a couple of things that need to be dealt with. There's, there's a bit of red from some lens flare and also this tiny bit of sand, you know, right, right down here. This is not adding to the scene at all. So we're going to just trim that up with a crop. So we'll start with uh, refining the crop. We'll nudge this up just to cut that off. And that sweep is ending pretty nicely. And it's a nice bonus. I get to keep the tip of that, that uh, uh, surf line. That's the word I'm looking for. All right. And then let's zoom in here and deal with these things. Um, now, I've done other videos where you can remove a lens flare um, pretty well with, um, with on one photo. For these, because they're so isolated, I'll try to do the technique as best I can in Lightroom, which is selecting a particular color and then desaturating it because what's behind it is a pretty neutral tone. But if that doesn't work, I can clone these, uh, these out because there's just nice tones to choose from next to it. So let's give it a try. So um, the idea of the, the, the technique is, let's just draw a brush stroke here. And for now, just so we can see what we're doing, you know, exposure, just to know that I'm hitting the right spot. Okay, there's that and there's that, right? Those are the, those are the two areas that we want to deal with. Okay, so I've got the brush strokes there. Now I want to do a color range mask. So color, and I would want to pick something in that bright red area. All right, so we think we've got the color, right? Let's turn on the mask overlay and I press the O key. And I'm going to do shift O so that the mask is green. So where we see green is where we're affecting things. And now as I play with this range mask, we can see that, yeah, it's kind of holding to the um, those red splotches. Let me turn off the mask for a minute. It's kind of holding to that. It's doing all right. 
and then I can try to desaturate and that would theoretically take away just the red but you know what it's just not working as well this is a tough one to do still uh, even with color range masks in Lightroom targeting a particular color to saturate desaturate using brushes and so forth I could do it in HSL but then I can't mask so you know we're kind of still stuck in that uh, that rough world there so I'm gonna reset this and close it out that's not going to be the approach let's do a clone we'll hit that spot there take a sample point that's pretty great we'll do another one there and and those are gone I could repeat that for this these uh, bits here matter of fact maybe we'll just try to do one it's kind of a uh, kind of a sweep down the center of that and it should if I bias that a little bit more we can start to blend that together and it becomes just more looking like the rock itself one more time there you know enough that well, that last one was bad enough that it's not going to uh, really distract me from anything and if, if if at all let's do that too we'll grab this we'll do a burn and we'll just nudge that down in terms of its brightness just to fill that in like that a couple more brush strokes and we can take the edge off of that with a with an exposure there so that uh, I think is gonna call it I am not going to continue with beach cleanup and and tidying up like all this stuff right over here these areas not that it's difficult but I don't think the photo warrants it enough uh, the colors in the sky didn't quite come through this was taken before sunset but I like the way the waves were working and the ocean was flowing around so I wanted to try out the photo and work on it and sometimes that happens right you, you work on a photo invested what 10 minutes into this photo um, probably less if I wasn't narrating uh, to find out all right this isn't the one that I want to really you know call the the killer from the shot you know the uh, the, the keeper from the shoot so um, that's going to do it. That is the, the end of the live edit. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some, uh, some ideas for your own processing. And if you've got questions about photography, anything at all, hit me up in the comments below or uh, drop me a line through my website if you want to keep it private. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.